the Lord is good and his love endures forever. Let us uh, say together the first church prayer action verse, prayers, presents, gifts, service, witness, love and power, grace and mercy, faithfulness, fruitfulness, courage. We come together to receive God's blessings. We go out in the name of Jesus, offering God's care to all people. Thanks be to God. Let us pray together. Therefore, with our hearts lifted high, we offer you, O God, thanks and praise at all times through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Welcome to Worship Online. Welcome to the month of August, the first Sunday of August and the ninth Sunday after Pentecost. We are glad you have chosen to join us. We thank you for watching our online worship services for almost five months. We are called to worship God in spirit and in truth wherever we are situated. Our opening hymn is from the United Methodist Hymnal 88, Maker in Whom We Live, authored by Charles Wesley in 1747. This hymn is mostly meant to be sung as an opening hymn, setting the focus of the service and also helping the congregation to worship the Trion God. Wesley reminds us of God's greatness and his unconditional love in this beautiful hymn. This hymn is well-known hymn in the Methodist tradition. It is also important to know that Charles Wesley was the first Christian leader to bring Trinity, Trinity, the tree on God, into hymns and poems. As we sing this great hymn, let us look for the description of the Trinity God. In the first verse, we will sing about the Creator and Maker God. In the second verse, we will sing about God the Son with His redeeming grace. In the third verse, we will sing about the energy and power of the Holy Spirit. The last verse summarizes the Trinity, inviting us to sing and praise God the three in one. Let us sing together, Maker in whom we live.
believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We come to the tree on God with all our prayers and petitions. We offer our prayers and petitions to our Maker, our Redeemer, and our Sustainer. In silence, let us offer prayers of joy for the 95th birthday of Eleanor Fled. Prayers of joy for Lily Serb, who became a citizen of the U.S. Lily is originally from Romania. Prayers for the complete recovery of Laura Grabowski. Prayers for Jenny Healing, who will have a surgery on August 11th. Prayers for Harlan Peterson, who was diagnosed with cancer and beginning a treatment. Harlan is the friend of Carlson's. Prayers for Shirley, who is entering her final stages of life. Shirley is the mother of John Harris. Prayers for those who are in assisted living homes and other healthcare centers. These are the wonderful people. Let us name them one by one. Margaret Brown, Anne Dungey, Alice Ellert, Eleanor Fled, Agnes Hemenway, Rita Nicholas, Gladys Pearson, Marlene Zarka, Jean Watson, Betty Zulmer, and others. Prayers for the mission and ministry of our church, the first United Methodist Church here in West, West Alice, including the phase three worship services in the parking lot that begins tomorrow. Continued prayers for the COVID-19, uncertainty of economy, of national and international, and political unrest. people of prayer, we lift our voices to God. We give you all thanks and praise, O God, for you offer us the banquet that feeds us abundantly and fills us with your presence. You strove against the darkness and chaos, and you prevailed, bringing forth creation in all its miraculous abundance. You challenged your servant Jacob face to face and gave him your blessing and promise. From his family, you formed, formed your covenant people in whom your glory, your law, and your worship were revealed to the world. But now, in these last days, your Messiah, Jesus, has emerged from among them, bringing your compassion and healing to all. Though he was cursed and cut off for the sake of his people, you raised him from death. Now in him, you offer food for our deepest hunger, and it is in holding tight to him that we see your face and receive your blessing. We offer our lives and our prayers to you in the name of Jesus Christ, the one who continues to teach us, praying together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever. Amen. We say good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Children's Time. Thanks for coming and hanging out with me this morning. I have something for you. Let's see. What do I have in here for you? Oh, candy. Candy for you. Candy for you. And candy for you. Why do I get two? What? I like it too. You only got two? How many do you have? Four. How many do you have? Five. Oh, wait. Can you wait to eat that? <laughs> Give it just a minute. Oh. How does it make you feel that you only have two instead of four? It makes you feel sad? Do you think she should feel sad? Do you think she should feel sad that she only got two instead of four? You're such a stinker. <laughs> do you think, Zachary, do you think that Brinley should feel sad that she only got two instead of four candies? It's four candies. Oh. Well, let me ask you a question. How would it make you feel if I took two of your candies and I gave Brinley two candies and you only get two candies now? How do you feel? Sad. You feel sad? Mm -hmm. Why? Why do you feel sad? Because they have more than me. Because someone else has more than you? Mm -hmm. one, of, one of God's commandments tells us what? That, um, don't steal. Well, yes, one of them does say don't steal. But one of them says we should not because want. Want that anybody else has. That belongs to them. Right. So we should not want what someone else has. I'll be right back. No, you stay here. Stay. I'm going to get it. It's okay. Oh, Stay here. You are correct. But it's really hard when you want what someone else has, right? Because you, <laughs> you want to have four candies, got, not two candies, right? I got it. I got it. I got it. If you, if, how about everybody else has the candy and <laughs> it will be equal? You're so sweet. You're doing, you're trying to make it fair, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's really nice. But that but, guy is going to eat all four. But you know what? It's really easy for us to want something. And you know, God created something in us for us to want things. But what happens when these candies go away after you eat them? Do you still want them? What do you need more? What do you think we need more of? Do you think we need, once they're gone, do you think we need more candy? No. Or do you think that we should desire and want more of God? Mm -hmm. I got, I got. You want more God. So God created I this. I something. Oh, okay, tell me. Go ahead. Um, how about, like. Can I talk Zachary, loud so we can hear? How about, like, Zachary is going to eat all of his candy and he wants more? And if he doesn't mean, like, he's going to say, I want more candy, but he doesn't want more candy. He needs more love from God. You're right. I like that thought. So instead of Zachary wanting more candy, he should want more love from God. Yeah. Yeah. Is it super easy to complain when we don't get what we want? Like Zachary did. Oh, Zachary does it a lot. <laughs> Do you complain when you don't get what you want? Uh-huh. Do you throw toys? Uh-uh. No? He's lying. lying. How, about, how about you guys? When you are in the store with me and there's something that you really, really want and I say no, do you want to stomp your feet and say, I want it? It's really easy to want to do that, to, right? I try not to, but I did. Yeah, it's, it's really hard. You have to try really mm -hmm. hard. How about when I say, it's time to go to bed, and you say, yeah, I want to go to bed. Oh, that does that. Is that says, complaining? Yeah, that's complaining. That's, that's complaining. Exact. But I won't say that because um, otherwise we won't get to read books. <laughs> then we don't read books if I if I we say yeah, that, right? Yeah, but sometimes we don't have to read because books because we don't have enough time. Yeah, it's hard. It's really tough sometimes. Yeah, Brinley, back up just a smidgey. So, what what do you think the word contentment means? I think I think. I think what does the word content mean? I think it means that you have to be I can't understand you. I think it means you have to be patient. Oh, it means you have to be patient. 
Ooh, that's a really good thought. What do you think content means? I don't know. Give a guess. I want milk. <laughs> <laughs> you want milk. You already have milk. Right. What do you think content means? Uh, yogurt. It means yogurt. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, Brinley, you are half right. <laughs> to be content means to be happy with something. So, if I gave if I gave Brinley four candies, can you get those two candies back? Okay. Actually, let's get them back to Sophia. If I gave Sophia four candies and I gave you two candies, even though it feels unfair that you got less than she got, you have to be content or be happy that you even got candy to begin with. Does that make sense? Yes. Because there are going to be lots of people. Okay, you have to be very patient. Like okay. very content. You have to be content. Yes, and it, it, it content really means to be happy with something. Okay. So we do sometimes have to be very patient to reach contentment. Because sometimes you might say yeah. things like, "Mom, I want more cereal." And it takes a long time for me to bring you cereal, right? Uh, not very much because it's easy to do. Well, yes. And but sometimes it takes some time. To our yeah, sometimes it takes a while for me to bring it, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to be, you have to be wait patiently until I come and until you get patient. what you want. This is what we say: to be patient. You wait and you wait. Smile. You wait and you wait and you wait with a smile. That doesn't really. Do but you know, it always <laughs> with a smile. Well, no, but. It's hard. So what we need to do is sometimes we need to kind of take two things. We have to kind of look at the situation with candy and with God very, very much the same. Okay? You do like God more than candy? That's awesome. So sometimes we. I like people. I like. I like. I like people that I don't even know are still with them, even when they don't know. Okay. So we need to remember that in situations, sometimes we need to be we need to be reaching out to God instead of uh, wanting instead of instead of wanting other things. Okay, and then when we find the other things, we need to be content or be happy with what we have. Does that make sense? Can you pray with me, Zachary? Can you come pray with us? Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us together to teach us about being content or being happy. Mama. Please remind us that even when the things that we really want or we really desire, when those things are gone, that we still have you and that we should draw closer to you and find more contentment in you and in your love for each of us. Be with us today and every day as we move forward with your love in our hearts. Amen. Okay, Brinley, what did you want to say to everybody? Hurry, go get your people. Oh, okay. <laughs> hurry, hurry, hurry. Yes, yes, yes. Hurry, 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 hurry. I got it. Okay, show it to everybody. Hurry, 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 hurry. Bye. We miss you. Say bye.
Our scripture this morning is Psalm 128. Happy is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. You shall eat the fruit of the labor of your hands. You shall be happy, and it shall go well with you. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children will be like olive shoots around your table. Thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. This is the living word of God. Thanks be to God. Songs for the journey. Let me begin by quoting the verse 5 from Psalm 128, which is our scripture reading today. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless each one of us from Zion all the days of your life and my life. The Lord's blessings, that's all we need today and every day. God's blessings for our life. When we are satisfied with God's blessings, today, tomorrow, every day, that's called godly contentment. In my culture, there is a cultural saying. It's very interesting. And that cultural saying is repeated almost at every wedding. It is related to the wedding meal. When the stewards serve the wedding meal, the wedding guests usually say, enough. They would say, enough. But the cultural saying goes this way, enough at wedding meals means I need more. One more scoop of rice, one more serving of curry, one more piece of chicken, one more spoon of pepper water, and little more dessert. Enough means more, and that's our cultural phrase. Why do people say enough for wanting more? Because the wedding guest should never regret a particular dish that was so good I did not ask for more. So the standard instruction at all the weddings is when the guests say enough, give them more. In the last several months, it seems the crisis is going on endlessly. Living as a Christian, living as a church member, living as a follower of Jesus Christ, involves hardships and difficulties. It seems life has become a kind of dry sometimes empty. Someone told me recently that I feel like the color of life, the color of my life is gone. It seems the colors of life are drained or fading. Psalm 128, friends, is a great reminder of responding to such doubts. No, life is not empty. No, life is not dry. No, life has not lost its color. Life is still full, fresh, green, and very colorful. Psalm 128 reminds that the true worshipers of the living God continue to bless us, 
continue to bless us. The living God continues to bless us. And we continue to be the recipients of the divine blessings. We may feel not enough, but more God's blessings, friends, are in the way. In verse 1, blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. God's blessings are not cheap. We can't take them for granted. Blessings are worked out, designed, and made and meant by God for all those who fear him, for all those who walk in God's ways. We are blessed by God, of course, with conditions. According to Psalm 28, 128 verse 1, fearing the Lord and walking in his steps. Fearing the Lord does not mean that we should be scared of God, but we should approach God with awe, wonder, and reverence. In other words, let us not take God for granted. Let us not take for granted. Let us not take God to our advantage. In other words, let us not use God to our convenience because God is majestic. God is holy. God is wondrous. God is generous. God is vast and God is miraculous. Let us never forget that. Someone said, God made us in his own image and likeness and we must return the compliment by trying to make God in ours. God is good. We ought to be good. God is gracious. We ought to be gracious. God is generous. We ought to be generous. God is a God of blessing. And we ought to be people of blessing. Maybe we should learn to pray this way. Lord, bless me as I continue to walk in your ways. Lord, bless me as I continue to offer my worship, praise, and thanksgiving. The blessings of God are worked out in the lives of those who fear him and walk in his ways. If contentment, contentment, summarizes the thoughts of this psalm, Psalm 128, then contentment is not to keep on getting more blessings. Some people think that blessing and contentment come from just getting blessings after blessing. What we read in the scripture is that it is more blessed it is more blessed to give and share than to receive. Psalm 128 defines the word blessing as receiving and giving. God gives us the blessings and we, God's people, in turn, share and give those blessings in need. Receive and give God's blessings. The blessings of God flows to those who have learned that it is more blessed to give than to receive. Let me use the illustration from Psalm 28 itself. Mealtime comes. The family gathers. The family members, spouse, children, parents, sometimes guests, Sometimes gra grandparents join us. Sometimes extended family members join us. The meal, the delicious meal is brought to the table. All share the meal. All share the meal. All share the blessing of a beautiful and delicious meal. The family receives and gives the blessing of a meal. What a beautiful expression in verse 3. 
the spouse is a fruitful vine. Children are olive shoots. The family gathers around the table. What is the prayer at the table? May the Lord bless you all the days of your life. Maybe when the prayer is offered, may the Lord bless you all the days of your life. A little one, uh, two year or three year old might ask the question, what do we mean when we say, may the Lord bless you all the days of your life? The children are at the table are told, they will see their children and their children. Blessings, according to Psalm 128, will come for generations. When we fear God and walk in His ways, God's blessings will flow out to the people from one generation to another generation, as the psalmist puts it. That's the good news we hear today. The psalmist clearly states, God's blessings would extend to people living long enough to see many, many generations. All parents, grandparents, and great-grandparents, I invite you at this time to say a prayer of thanksgiving today for God's blessings being extended for your generations. I have asked in the recent past, many of us have asked the question, as we look around and as we look at the current reality, how long are we going to go through this restlessness and difficulties when compared with the blessings promised for generations, months of difficulties and unrest are nothing. Promised blessings for generations will take us on quite a different path and perspective. In closing, let me share a story about our founder, John Wesley, and his brother, Charles Wesley. After a difficult time of discernment, John Wesley and his brother, Charles Wesley, the hymn writer, began to sail to Savannah, Georgia, as missionaries to America. John Wesley served as a chaplain on board the ship. In the ship, John met some missionaries from Germany who were coming to America to serve the Native Americans. A powerful storm hit the ship and almost threatened the lives of all people on board. John Wesley was so terrified. But John noticed that the Moravian missionaries from Germany, they were not only calm and peaceful, but they were singing Christian hymns and songs until the, song, the storm got settled. John Wesley asked the Moravian pastor, Augustus Spagenberg, how they could remain calm and peaceful throughout the storm. Pastor Augustus replied by asking John Wesley a question. John, do you know Jesus Christ? the source of our peace. The history says that Wesley answered that he did, but even to his own ears, the answer sounded empty. John Wesley later on wrote in his journal that during the storm, the English missionaries, referring to himself and his brother, were screaming, whereas the German Moravian missionaries were calmly singing. They did not complain, neither did they get angry. Wesley was 
totally challenged and changed. He said in his journal, the gracious Lord has so much done through his miraculous acts that they ought to be had in remembrance. Friends, the Lord blessed Wesley, protecting his life from a storm. The Lord blessed Wesley, transforming his life, not to be a lip service missionary, but a missionary trusting in the Lord's blessing. The Lord blessed Wesley with real inner peace. The Lord's blessings have continued for almost 300 years of Methodist movement all over the world. Methodism has continued generation after generation. May the Lord bless you and me. May the Lord bless all of us all the days of your life and my life and our lives and for many generations to come. Amen. August greetings. Please sign up for phase three of returning to the church with parking lot worship services all Sundays in August at 9 a.m. August 9th and 23rd will be a healing service and August 16th and 30th will be a Holy Communion service. All services will include prayers, hymns, and a devotion. Because seating will be limited to 30 for each service, you are asked to make a reservation. As always, you can sign up online by calling the church office or by mailing the sign-up form to the office. All guidelines for the safety and health of all will be strictly followed. Online worship will will continue to be recorded on Saturday morning and published on Saturday evening. For more information, please read the Phase 3 Talking Points insert in the August Methodist Messenger or call the church office. A third COVID-19 Church Now and Beyond training opportunity will be held on Wednesday, August 5th at 7 p.m. via Zoom webinar. For Session 3, Pastor Sam has invited specialists and experts from Aurora Healthcare to address the psychological implications of COVID-19, the economic uncertainty, and other current realities. Please be sure to take advantage of this excellent learning opportunity. If you have not been part of the first two webinars, you must register for part three. The information is on the website and after registering, you will receive a confirmation email containing information about joining the webinar. Please consider doing this. Please be sure to check out the August church calendar that is posted on BAND and the church website. And you still have time to register for Virtual Bolt Backyard VBS on August 17th, 18th, and 19th. Bolt Backyard VBS is designed to bring the fun and faith formation of VBS to your home. Please invite your friends and neighbors to join us. Registration information is on the website. Please let Pastor Sam or the church office know if you have any prayer requests. And please, when you learn of a prayer concern, please let Pastor Sam or the office know about this also. Your prayer concerns are very important to us. We would again like to thank everyone who faithfully mail their offerings to church each week. We need your continued support because the financial needs of the church and building continue, as do our ministries and missions. And the most convenient and preferred method to receive your contribution is through online giving. Please see the website for a link to register for online giving. The Communication and Technology Committee is looking for volunteers. Help is needed in the following areas. Social media, live streaming, operating the soundboard, and PowerPoint. If you are interested, please consider volunteering. Youth and adults are welcome. More information is in the August Methodist Messenger. This week's calendar, Monday, August 3rd, Please be sure to register for the COVID-19 Church Now and Beyond Webinar 3. Monday, August 3rd, SPRC meeting, 6.30 p.
p.m. via Zoom. Tuesday, August 4th, staff meeting at 9.10 a.m. Wednesday, August 5th, Yarn Ministry is meeting at McCarty Park near the pool at 12 p.m. Wednesday, August 5th, COVID-19 Church Now and Beyond webinar session three from 7 to 8 p.m. Thursday, August 6th, reservations for the August 9th parking lot worship service ends at noon. Friday, August 7th, reflection and prayer time, 12 to 12.30 p.m. Saturday, August 8th, second Saturday servants, please contact Tom Bolton for more information. And Saturday, August 8th, at 6 p.m., online worship service is posted. The Coins of Love for August will support the new mission initiative, God's Hot Dog Ministry in the Parking Lot. It is jointly sponsored and coordinated by the youth group, the mission team, and the church event planner. Neighbors will be welcome and invited to enjoy hot dogs, chips, and water or juice. The purpose is to show God's love for all people and families during this time of crisis. God cares about you, and so do we. Please mark coins of love on your check when mailing your offering to the church office. This morning, we express our faith and commitment to God through our tithes and offerings for the work of God's church. Let us pray. Gracious God, we bring our gifts to your altar, asking you to dedicate them to do the work of love and compassion in the world. We learn from Jesus, who had compassion on the crowds who gathered to hear him teach, that putting what we have in the hands of Jesus can bring abundance. Multiply these gifts with love in which they are offered, that they might bring hope to those in need and might glorify and celebrate your love for all your children. In Christ's name we pray, amen. We thank Alex Schrader for the special music today. We are always thankful for all those who have offered themselves to serve God and people through the worship services during this summer. As we heard from community sharing, we begin phase three this week. I invite you to sign up for the Sundays in the month of August. I also thank all who have registered for and participated in the training via webinar the past two Wednesdays and one more to go on August 5th. Our sending hymn is from The Faith We Sing, 2145. I have got peace like a river. An African-American spiritual song in those days, and even today, such spiritual songs are the source of faith and hope in times of poverty and captivity. In my notes, I have underlined these words, in times of poverty and captivity. As slaves and victims of the trade market, people in the fields and rivers and oceans being captured in boats and ships. They were singing such spiritual songs to be relieved from the stress of life and demands of life. I understand this song is based on Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 12 and also Galatians 5.22 as the spiritual texts. Water is the connecting theme of this song. Peace like a river, joy like a fountain, love like an ocean. It's all about water. As we sing this hymn, let us remember individuals and communities who are even today struggling with stress and demands of life, and those especially in poverty and captivity. 
and those who are still struggling to have their own freedom those people are in pain tears and sorrows let us prayerfully sing that they might have peace love and joy let us also open our own lives our hearts and minds and souls to be filled and blessed with god's peace god's joy and god's love psalm 128 which is our scripture reading ends with these words peace be upon you when we sing we will have strength like a mountain let us together sing May the Lord bless us all the days of our lives. May the Lord bless us with the prosperity of our places. May the Lord bless us with his everlasting peace. Amen and amen.